Today, we will be summarizing an Australian film called, Not Suitable for Children. Spoiler alert! Watch out and take care. The scene opens up at a wild boozy house party. We're introduced to our protagonist, Jonah, a scruffy, hedonistic man in his 20s. He lives in a shared rundown house in the inner city with his roommates Gus and Stevie. Together, they used to throw such house parties every week. At one such party, the power goes out because Jonah has forgotten to pay his electric bill. It was his third and final notice. Under such grim circumstances, the trio decided to announce that the party was over. But thanks to Jonah's clever move and his neighbor's support, the party was back on track. Jonah managed to convince him at the last minute to provide the party with an electricity supply in exchange for $500 and a bottle of vodka. The loud music, marijuana, and alcohol were back on the front seat, with the background filled with color-changing red and green lights. Insatiable party animal Jonah, living the high life, called out for the party to continue till lunchtime. Music shook the window panes and the trio bounced to the beat. It was the moment of their life. At the party, Jonah met his casual sex partner and stalker, Becky. They retreat to his room to spend some intimate moments together. They were totally into each other when Becky noticed a lump on Jonah's testicles. Jonah, who has spent his entire life around partying and casual sex, suddenly finds himself contemplating his mortality. The next day, at the doctor's clinic, after a regular checkup, the doctor reveals that Jonah has testicular cancer. The good news is the cancer is in its very primal stage and Jonah is supposed to get 100% recovery after the surgery. Jonah feels relieved after listening to his words. But there is some bad news awaiting him too. The doctor continues talking about the report. To stop the spread of cancer to other parts of his body, they have to remove one of his testicles in time. So, the treatment will render him infertile, ending any hope he may have had of being a father. The doctor suggests that Jonah uses a sperm bank in case he would like to have children after the operation. Jonah agrees and finishes all the procedures for the same. When Stevie returns home after work, Gus informs him about Jonah's condition. Stevie asks him to inform his sister about this condition. In such a situation, the trio realizes that they have a party scheduled for the coming Friday. Jonah allows them to keep the date unchanged, not wanting to explain his condition to partygoers. The next day, Jonah went to meet his ex-girlfriend Ava but came back home without talking to her. Jonah wanted to share the news with her but didn't get the courage to do so. They had broken up six months back and were on a no-contact-for-six-months rule. In the meantime, Jonah receives a call from the sperm bank and goes in for a meeting. The nurse explains that Jonah falls into a small percentage of men, whose sperms cannot be frozen because of biological complications. Robbed of the only chance to start a family in the future, a potent paternal instinct inside him kicks in that narrows his focus to a pinpoint. Finding a woman willing to bear his child before the life-saving operation renders him infertile. At this point, Joan began the strenuous and awkward journey of finding a woman to carry his child. With the surgery mere weeks away, Jonah starts scrolling through his contracts, to find the perfect match. He starts with Ava. He meets her up in a local coffee house. Ava is disgusted with Jonah for contacting her before six months. So, he cuts her up from the list. Next up, he tries to convince Becky to help him become a father. But she rejects him after claiming that she never thought of her and Jonah as a couple. Clearly, his attempts didn't go very well. But, there is a catch. Jonah didn't tell the girls about having testicular cancer. Maybe he didn't want to show them that he was desperate to become a father. Jonah goes back to the doctor to ask for more time. He managed to move his operation to three weeks later. His once insatiable appetite for living the high life and partying till lunchtime has fallen next to this overriding desire to make a teeny tiny part of himself within the limited time frame. All that matters to him is that he becomes a father by any possible means. Meanwhile, Gus and Jonah realize that hosting parties could be their job. They remember the time the trio managed to continue with the party after the power went out. Back then, even the guests pitched in to help pay. Gus realized that the three of them could make a weekly salary from hosting a party. The idea turns out to be successful. Jonah got his first paycheck, which was worth over $700. 
Meanwhile, Jonah began making a list of women with whom he has had a meaningful or not so meaningful relationship, in the hope that one of them has a biological clock ticking at the same deafening rate as his. In the meantime, his housemate, Gus, who remains resolutely opposed to helping and assisting Jonah in this immoral quest, takes out a list of all the girls who have ever come in contact with Jonah. He calls them up individually to warn them about Jonah's medical condition and his true intentions. As a result, Jonah was rejected by every single woman on the list. What started with a sensitively handled quest to find a mother for his hoped-for child turns out to be something that ruined everything that Jonah loved. Somehow, Jonah came to know about it. He lost his temper and asked Gus to stay out of his way. Stevie suggests adoption and Jonah looks into it, but soon figures out that in order to be a candidate for adoption you must have a clean health record and Jonah has cancer written all over his application. After having no luck, Stevie suggests Jonah try an arrangement with a woman. She tells him about a lesbian couple who works in her office. They were looking into sperm donation. To help Jonah, Stevie sets them up for a meeting. Meanwhile, Gus came to know about this setup and was furious at Stevie for helping Jonah. But in the end, he had to give up. During the interview, Jonah was tongue-tied while briefing about his actual reason for his desperate situation. But he expressed his unwillingness to do the actual biological process with the fat one. This conversation ended up making the meeting quite awkward and uncomfortable. Naturally, the comments made by Jonah turned the meeting against his favor and the couple declined the offer. The next day, Jonah took up the responsibility to babysit his niece and nephew. Stevie joined him with the task. While babysitting, they got into a conversation. Stevie consoled Jonah and advised him to move on. Later, when they prepared to come back home, Stevie picks up a toddler from his seat. The innocence and purity of the child won over her heart. The headstrong Stevie who had no interest in experiencing motherhood earlier suddenly felt an urge to have a child. But she somehow managed to overcome the feeling. Stevie suggests another woman to Jonah. She wants to have a child but is not married. Stevie sets up a meeting with her too. The meeting turns out to be more fruitful as compared to the previous ones. But it was still disappointing. Although Jonah goes home with her, he doesn't sleep with her. The reason was, too much alcohol made him drunk he couldn't focus. Jonah becomes frustrated. He discusses with Stevie that he was even willing to let the mother of his child live as she wants, and will not intervene with her choice of career, friends, or boyfriends. He adds the fact that he would even give his house to the woman willing to bear his child. Stevie starts to like the idea of an arrangement. Stevie accidentally tips off Jonah that she would be interested in the deal. She sends Jonah out of her room to think about it for a while. The next day, at her office she falls for a toddler again and began researching about the ovulation cycle. At the weekend party, Stevie stays in her room with the excuse that she was suffering from a migraine. Jonah calls her up and tells her that he would give her anything if she would carry the child. The morning after the party, Jonah receives a text message from Stevie asking him to come to her room. It is revealed that Stevie stayed up the whole night to write a contract concerning her deal with Jonah. When he arrives in her room, she hands him over the documents. Jonah reads all the terms and conditions of the agreement and silently signs it up. Stevie informs him that they have a four-day window that Stevie should be ovulating in, before her periods kick in. They book a room at a cheap motel for the four days with the final being two days before Jonah's operation. They plan for performing artificial sex because Stevie doesn't want to have actual sex with her best friend fearing that it would ruin their relationship. But back at the motel, when practicing a mock demonstration of the actual process, Jonah accidentally breaks the syringe. They go to the pharmacy but find all the shops closed. Stevie suggests waiting for another day, but Jonah gets frustrated. Looking at his condition, Stevie finally gives up and agrees to do it with the natural process. After some awkward conversations, they began the actual business. But midway through the process, after a few noses and head collisions, Stevie got more conscious and suggested building the process slowly. Soon they overcame the weirdness and got intimate with time. They have sex, and for the rest of the four days, they meet at the hotel, have sex, and then stagger their arrival at home so Gus doesn't notice. On the fifth day, Stevie gets her period at work. 
She calls Jonah and asks him to meet her outside her workplace. They get into a fight. Stevie claims that she was happy as her period came and confessed that she was having second thoughts about this arrangement. Jonah leaves. Stevie is absent at the party that night, but Gus has made a call to Ava. Ava arrives at the party. Ava meets Jonah and blames him for not telling her about cancer. She offered to carry his child. Jonah and Ava retreat to his room to have sex, but Jonah pulls out at the last moment because he realizes his love for Stevie. Jonah leaves to go find her, hoping that she will be home. Jonah asks Ava to stay in his room. Jonah finds Stevie, but she notices Ava coming out of Jonah's room and storm off, feeling betrayed. Meanwhile, the police arrive to stop the party. Jonah catches up with Stevie and confesses his love for Stevie, but she doesn't listen to him and leaves. The next morning, Jonah's sister comes to pick him and Gus up for the operation. Jonah is sad at first, but Stevie does show up for moral support. She apologizes for the night before and asks Jonah, the things he said to her the other night, did he actually mean them? Jonah agreed, in front of Gus, who never suspected anything going on between them. Stevie said that she thought Jonah would make a great father and he should look into sperm donation or adoption with her. They kiss and Jonah is wheeled away into the operating room. The final line of the movie is what the f Rated 5.8 on IMDb, the movie is an example of how real people respond when they grapple with a monumental situation. It isn't a romantic movie depicting a string of unbelievable coincidences to make us believe that love is connected to our destiny, rather it makes us believe that love can happen at the most unexpected places in the most unexpected times. What do you think about this movie? Do tell your opinion in the comments below. Press the like button if you agree with its message. Do subscribe, it helps the channel grow. Thank you.